Hello and welcome to October's edition of the eCapital Advisors PBCS Updates webinar. Thank you for joining us today. As always, I am Eric Milbrandt, joined by my partner in webinar crime today, Jay Adler, and we will be taking you through, again, October's PBCS releases and updates, as well as a fun undocumented update that has potentially sent some of you searching for substitution variable editing. So never fear, we will cover that as well. For those of you that might be joining us or newer to these webinars and not know much about eCapital, we would just like to give you a quick background. So we are a full service technology and advisory management consulting firm dedicated to all of our clients through building long-term relationships. We like to do that by constructing and architect architecting world-class analytics platforms as well as transformational plans to take businesses into the future. We like to take our commitment far beyond deliverables and really strive to understand all levels and all functions within our organizations to provide ongoing excellence and keep the people we work with enabled, empowered, and accomplished. A little more about eCapital, we are an established firm. We have over 80 employees with teams based in 14 states that have completed projects nationwide as well as globally. We are right around that $25 million per year in revenue mark and growing. We've had over 300 customers, many of them in the Fortune 500 or 100 suite, and we really specialize, again, in advisory and, and technology solutions, covering a wide range of, of functions, such as performance management, general business analytics through architecture, governance, cognitive and predictive analytics, which is really getting to more of the future world class, as well as visualization, and really helping our clients become self-service technology organizations. We are adept at full-scale implementations as well as upgrades and analytics health checks, so I would encourage you to reach out if you are considering pursuing any technology project. We would love to perform a quick analysis and a quick health check to see what the best strategy might be from our perspective for your organization. We do that, again, through advisory road mapping. We can provide private cloud hosting services as well as managed services where we are committing a monthly set of hours or services to you that you have free reign to use as you would see fit. We've worked in many industries, and our expertise spans those industries, such as retail, healthcare, finance, manufacturing, education, and transportation. And just to further prove that, here's a quick NASCAR slide that does show, again, some of the companies we have worked with. This is by no means a full list, but is, again, intended to give some exposure to the kinds of companies we, we do work with and have worked with in the past. So, for those of you who don't know, my name is Eric Milbrandt. I'm a senior EPM consultant here at eCapital. I've been with the organization for over five years and have about a 10-year career in technology and finance. And I'm joined today by Jay Adler, who has been with eCapital for about three years now and also has a career heavily anchored in finance and technology. Moving on to the main purpose of these webinars, and of course today's main purpose is the PBCS monthly webinar. So every month, Oracle's planning and budgeting cloud service rolls out updates and enhancements to the web cloud tool, which is really nice versus the on-prem technology in that you don't have to wait for a major on-prem release for updates. Things can be a little more nimble in Oracle's got a, a better ability to, to provide updates and enhancements to things that might be causing great pain or complaints from, from their user base. So a little more about what PBCS is, is again, it's the cloud-based software suite really for Oracle's Hyperion and planning at space on-prem service, which is going to be the future. Although there will be recently announced a, a version 12 for the on-premise Hyperion planning in S-Base, the idea is that eventually everything will roll on to PBCS over the next decade or two. That said, there are still plenty of people using the on-prem, so it's by no means dead or dying, but there's definitely a push towards cloud as this is the future for most technology applications. So again, Full, full service planning and budgeting suite, faster innovation, faster deployment through lower cost and lower risk. So an example, you're not buying servers and hardware to roll out this tool. You're not installing and going through all of the firewalling and some challenges that a lot of on-prem server installations have. And so the idea is that people can get up to speed with proof of concepts, frameworks, and, and simple applications much quicker and at a much lower cost in the cloud tool. And not only that, they have the benefit of Oracle's optimized hardware, optimized uptime and configurations of everything so that things are running 
very, very optimized on the, on the cloud end. And so some of those responsibilities are kind of shifted off of internal IT organizations and onto Oracle so that business users and model builders for PBCS can focus on those activities. Also, don't forget about ePBCS or the Enterprise Planning and Budgeting Cloud Service. This includes some pre-built modules for quicker rollout and for some more out-of-the-box functionality to get people moving along a predefined framework quicker. This includes modules for project planning, financials, things like income statement, expenses planning, workforce, your human capital management, and capital or capex management. This is a little costlier on a license basis, but does, again, include that increased functionality. There are updates rolled out to PBCS, but some are ePBCS specific, and those may or may not be included in every monthly release. So again, just ePBCS is really striving to have tools that really serve all functions individually as well as wholly for any, any organization through that enterprise planning cloud philosophy. As everyone knows, the SmartView add-in is the key way to interact with not only on-prem but cloud PBCS through Excel, Word, and PowerPoint, Excel, of course, being the most robust tool. And PowerPoint has, of course, that nice functionality of having direct database connections to slides that can be updated every month for management executive presentations to board of directors or, or things like that. So to jump into the main purpose of today's webinar, we will now talk about the new features. New in October, we have not as many updates as, as folks are probably used to in previous months, just some EPM automate updates, some task list changes, some service settings for FR, and some other navigational changes for maintenance and master detail relationships, which we'll get into in detail. Another thing that's nice to know is as these releases come out and they're tested and, and more users are joining the platform, Oracle does maintain a Cloud Customer Connect philosophy, which leads to publications of new release info, upcoming events in your area nationwide, and Q&A forums. All of this is to say that this is really geared towards building a community that helps Oracle gather and ultimately implement feedback, and they ask that feedback be mailed to epm.doc underscore ww at oracle.com, and in the body they request that someone is inquiring or providing feedback be stated, and also that the cloud service be indicated for the tool feedback is being provided for. So we encourage people to use that. Oracle does actually pay attention to that stuff. So this month, the enhancements and updates were rolled into the test environments. As everyone knows, you get a test and production instance with PBCS on October 5th, and they will be hitting production on October 19th. Another thing we want to call attention to from last month is that there was an undocumented change in the way that substitution variables are edited. They have moved away from the old location, and now you can find them under the navigation menu, under tools and user variables, and there's the substitution variable tab, which allows administrators to edit, design, and change substitution variables as well as their values. So if anyone's kind of misplaced those, it wasn't your fault, there has just been a quiet kind of move, and so this is where they are now located. The next update, which has been fairly common in recent months, is there is a new version of EPM Automate, which again is that command, command line batch tool that allows automation and command line interaction with your cloud instance. The updates in this release include a couple new commands. The first one is renamed snapshot, and the second one is run daily maintenance. And what these do are provide automation around the snapshotting that happens daily or on the schedule that's been prescribed as far as renaming, as well as the run daily maintenance command with an enhancement for skip next as a new parameter. It allows you to basically skip the next occurrence of a daily maintenance process if there is a long-running ad hoc process, a one-off process running for a quarter or a year-end or, or something like that. So we like to include also the link on this slide, which is the place where Oracle provides documentation and syntax for all of these EPM Automate commands, which is really probably the best resource to understand through examples and, and Oracle speak exactly what's available for all of the EPM Automate commands and functionality. Again, and here is a, a snippet from that document. And as you can see, there's a usage, an example, and an actual syntactical example, which will show you exactly what these commands are doing. So as you can see, for example, usage, EPM Automate, initializing your EPM Automate tool, space, rename, snapshot, your command, and then the snapshot name, which would be the current or old name, space, new snapshot name would be the new name. So again, very easy, very similar to Googling uh, calculation function commands, such as at relative, if you were looking for documentation on the on-premise calculation functions. So again, a very helpful tool that we would 
recommend you check out if you're looking at getting more in-depth into EPM Automate. And of course, you can always reach out to, to us at eCapital. Another change in this month's release is task lists now include a dashboard task type. So as we know, task lists are kind of used to guide users through the navigation process flow or workflow order or perform the order of steps that they should be performing throughout their budgeting and forecasting experience. And so if one of those tasks would be to print a dashboard screen or update a dashboard, you could facilitate that through adding a, a dashboard task type to a task list to point the user at a dashboard in order to help them perform a dashboard-related task. So that is a new ad within task list this month. The calculation manager function library has received a new function, which is the at calc manager dates to Excel, and this just serves to convert a single date in a year, 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 month, month, date, date format to an Excel date so that when um, <clears throat> when a date field or a date is accessed through Excel or SmartView, it comes in in a way that Excel understands it instead of needing additional formatting by the user. And again, Googling at Calc Manager Dates to Excel will provide full Oracle documentation on the, the command, which is what the screenshot is also from. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jay Adler to cover the rest of this month's updates. Thanks, Eric. Uh, so our next update here in the October release for PBCS is around a new toggle function for using FR Web Studio uh, as a server setting that involves how you're exporting uh, financial reporting um, reports to Excel. So now there's a, there's a setting called export to Excel using default sheet name. Um, by default, this is set to false, and what this means is when you export your reports out to Excel, um, and this is how it happens currently. Your tabs in the resulting sheet are named by default as they would be as they would be in Excel. So, as an example, sheet one, sheet two, etc. Um, and the other toggle for that setting would be to export using the names of the reports as the as the tabs as they're designed. So, um, just give it a little more flexibility there in the FR world for how you can how you can do that information when you export to Excel. Next update here has to do with dashboarding um, and getting getting kind of in depth with with how you're managing context between forms and charts uh, and graphs within within dashboarding. So new this month is the ability to tag one data form within a dashboard as the master data form. Uh, this is the case when you have multiple objects within a dashboard, so at least one data form, uh, possibly multiple, or having graphs charts in there, and when the Secondary objects within that dashboard are containing the same type of information, so the same kind of context as the master form. You can then use the master form kind of as a guide to set context throughout the dashboard. So you can you can select specific information within the master form, and you you just hit a quick selector that's called apply context, and what that does is then cascade to the other the other dashboards, assuming that they have. Uh, the same, all the same members within their definition. So what you're, what you're selecting specifically in the master form um, is contained in the secondary forms and or charts. Uh, you can then see that information based on kind of the, the point of view or the context in the master form. So um, kind of some more, uh, some more in-depth tools here, some flexibility that we're seeing, especially I think as we move towards phasing out composite forms and moving towards dashboarding within PBCS, um, just being able to do more with the tool. And the final specific update for October this month uh, would be a new application level setting within PBCS for export planning smartless data during your automated maintenance window. So this is a toggle in the application settings where you can decide between exporting out all objects, which is the current default, and it includes smartless detail. Now you're, you're able to hit no on this setting, which means that your, your automated backups uh, will contain a complete backup with data, but excluding smart forms. Now, the reason this has come about is, is Oracle decided they were seeing that when you're exporting all data and having to also include smart list text detail within that, uh, they weren't quite hitting their, their hour window for, for backups. Um, so now they give you the option to either continue, which means that those backups might take a little longer than expected, or rather not expected, but longer than the, the one hour which they, they typically communicate. Um, when you export everything, including smart, smart list detail, then you can incrementally import back in piece by piece as you normally would with your LCMs from the environment. Uh, selecting no means that you're only able to 
to bring in the same set of objects that are exported, meaning you won't have that smart list detail and you won't have the ability to incrementally import back into the environment before specific objects. So something to keep in mind here, um, if, you're, if, you're, if you have smart lists in your environment and you're seeing that your backups are taking longer than expected, um, this is an option to, to kind of um, expedite that process if need be. And so the final specific functionality updates for this month. Now we'll move into some, some quick support updates. And we've seen all of these before October, so just to kind of go back over them, um, the first one would be here, changes to app-level app access control. Uh, so what we're seeing now is within the EPM environment as well as data management, um, tax and close, different Oracle Cloud products at the app level, you're able to assign access using kind of the defined uh, domain roles, meaning um, planner, admin, et cetera. And what Oracle is aiming to do here, and behind the scenes they're doing this to kind of just clean up the ability to, to interact with access control across different the product suite. Um, what they're doing is you're no longer going to be able to see those roles defined as groups within access control. So nothing here changes with how you're assigning access to your applications, um, but you won't be able to see those planner, power user, admin, viewer roles as groups, but you still assign your group access as you normally would. What Oracle is asking right now is this change has not, has not yet gone into effect, uh, is that if you believe this will have an impact on your environment, they're asking you to submit a service request, kind of explaining why that is, and I'm sure they'll, they'll work with you on that. Um, the next one is the Classic Dimension Editor, which is having support removed sometime in the 2019 timeframe. What Oracle is saying here is that they will provide more details two months ahead of time, at least, of when they're actually going to remove support for the Classic Dimension Editor. <laughs> So if you've not yet made the switch over to the PVCS web interface um, metadata management tool, I recommend that you go ahead and do so as sometime in the next year you'll no longer be able to use the, the classic as it is uh, as it kind of appears on the, the on-prem. And another phase out update, which kind of touched on a bit ago, is you're no longer going to be able to create composite forms within PVCS and enterprise starting Similarly, in the 2019 timeframe, which Oracle will communicate at least two months out before this is happening. Um, so what they're saying is, and what we have started to do, is to um, start moving instead of using composite forms over to, to creating dashboards to uh, be able to kind of perform that analysis using multiple data sets or you know, related data um, and different charts, graphs, that sort of thing. So uh, we're seeing that that tool is becoming much more robust and that's gonna be the way of the future. So um, again, if you haven't started using dashboarding yet, uh, we recommend that you do so to prepare for this, this sunsetting update that's coming up. And that completes all of the updates for this month. Uh, again, just a quick recap and to thank you for joining us today. Uh, what we really aim to do in these webinars is, is page through everything that's coming out in the current month, kind of figure out what's, what's important for you to know, any new tools or functionality that you'll have at your disposal, and the important updates that are coming out. We look to present that to you. Uh, in a timely manner so that you can prepare for the, the changes that we push to prods. You can get kind of the most out of your implementation and your, and your investment. And we do this on a month-to-month -month basis here at ECAP. Quick reminder that you can go ahead and head to our website and, and subscribe uh, to receive these monthly updates from us. Uh, we think there's a lot of good information here. Um, we really deliver it to you kind of in a, in a way that we think is um, you know, easy to digest and, and get through using, using your environment. Um, so we encourage you to do so, and we also have a repository out there for all of the previous monthly releases for PBCS. So a lot of good information to have, especially if, you're, if you have a newer implementation or are just kind of looking to get some information about um, the products and kind of what you, can, what you can do in your planning implementation. So again, this is Jay. I was joined earlier by Eric, who kind of led us off. Uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us this month. Um, on behalf of ECAP, if you have any questions about about the Oracle Cloud product suite, or you have questions about specific uh, business requirements you may have, or you know if the tools are right for you, or what you can do with your existing implementation, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we'll get back to you quickly, and, and we'd look forward to working to you, working with you and for you there on a number of different fronts. So, thank you, and we'll see you next month.